London is one of the most historic cities in the world, which means it's been home to some of the most famous executions in history. Today, I'm going to show you some of London's most famous execution sites, many of which are hidden in plain sight. I hope you're made of stern stuff, for this is not for the faint-hearted. Just next to St Bartholomew's Hospital is one of London's most famous and oldest execution sites, Smithfield. This area is said to be haunted by the tortured souls who met their end here. The area was originally known as Smoothfield since it was a large expanse of grass and during the medieval era, the elms of Smithfield was one of the most bustling places in London. There was jousting, livestock grazing here, there were summer fates and then the odd execution. Some of the most famous people to have met their end at Smithfield include Scottish rebel William Wallace, who was hung, drawn and quartered in 1305, and the leader of the 1381 Peasants' Revolt, Watt Tyler, who was publicly decapitated here after fleeing from an earlier bloody exchange with the Lord Mayor of London. Many of the Marian martyrs that the Protestants slaughtered under Queen Mary Tudor met their demise here too. St Bartholomew's Hospital features this plaque to commemorate several of them. It was erected in 1870 by the Protestant Association of London. After Smithfield fell from favour as an execution hotspot in the 1400s, the Roman Road Junction at Tyburn, which is located near to today's Marble Arch, became the centre of public executions. Prisoners were taken in public procession from Newgate Prison via St Giles in the Fields in Oxford Street, which was then called Tyburn Road, to be hanged here at Tyburn Tree, which was a large triangular gallows with three legs that allowed many people to be hanged at the same time. Today, it's marked by these three oak trees. Many famous people met their ends here at Tyburn. Even the exhumed body of Oliver Cromwell was symbolically hanged here in 1661. And Londoners, with their gallows humour, brought Tyburn into common conversation. Phrases such as, take a ride to Tyburn and dance the Tyburn jig were well-known phrases in London at the time. This is London's central criminal court, but for many years, this was the site of London's most notorious prison, Newgate. Newgate Prison was commissioned in the 12th century by King Henry II and used for more than 700 years until 1902. And it struck fear into the heart of many a Londoner, with stories of conditions being so bad that prisoners went insane and even resorted to cannibalism. Inmates in the prison have included Casanova, Rob Roy, William Kidd, Ben Johnson and even Daniel Defoe. And outside the prison was a gallows. It's estimated that between 1790 and 1902, over 1,000 people were executed here. Of course, public executions were some of the most popular form of public entertainment, and on execution days, Newgate became jam-packed with thousands of spectators. A grand stage was erected to give the crowds a best view possible, and if you had the money, the Magpie and Stump public house would happily rent out an upstairs room and provide a good, hanging breakfast. London was once home to the world's largest port, and with that came a seedy underbelly of smuggling and piracy. During the 15th century, the Admiralty decided it was time to crack down. Pirates found guilty and sentenced to death would be paraded from Marshall Sea Prison in Southwark. They went across London Bridge, past the Tower of London, and finally arrived at Wapping. The streets would be lined with spectators and the Thames was full of boats eager to catch a glimpse of the condemned. On the way to their execution, prisoners were permitted one final quart of ale from this pub, the Turk's Head. Then they were brought down these steps and taken somewhere along the riverfront, a place known as Execution Dock. They would then be hanged with a short rope. This prolonged the pain of the execution since it didn't break the neck straight away. 
Afterwards, the dead would be left until three tides had washed over them. Some were the most feared and famed pirates of the age, including Captain Kidd, who was executed here in 1701. The next stop on our grisly trail is the Tower of London. Very few people were actually executed within the grounds of the Tower of London, although this was the case with Anne Boleyn and Lady Jane Grey. The last person to be executed in the Tower of London was Joseph Jacobs in 1941, who was executed by firing squad for being a German spy who was captured after parachuting into England during World War II. Most who were executed in the area met their maker on this site, an area of higher ground northwest of the tower. This is Tower Hill, and the executions would have taken place in full public view, as was the case with Thomas Cromwell and Sir Thomas More. A memorial stands on the site today. It reads, to commemorate the tragic history and in many cases, the martyrdom of those who, for the sake of their faith, country or ideals, staked their lives and lost. On this site, more than 125 were put to death, the names of some of whom are recorded here. Next up is Lincoln's Inn Fields, one of London's largest public squares. This bandstand was once upon a time the site of many gruesome executions. Anthony Babington, the leader of the 1586 Babington plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth I and replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots, was hung, drawn and quartered here after being convicted of high treason. Today, the area is a popular lunch destination for city workers and all that serves as a marker of the field's grisly past is the bandstand, which stands on the site of the former scaffold. I'm standing in front of the Palace of Westminster and in Old Palace Yard it was here that in 1606 Guy Fawkes was hung, drawn and quartered. In the view of the building, he had been sentenced to death for trying to blow up. And just 12 years later, Sir Walter Raleigh was also executed here, with his final words being, strike, man, strike, heard by many within the crowd. His wife carried his decapitated head around with her for many years afterwards. The first execution took place here in 1678. A poor lady named Sarah Elston was burned at the stake for killing her husband. And later on, more than 100 men and women were executed at the gallows on the site of St Mark's Church. Later, there were 17 Jacobite rebels, also hanged, drawn and quartered here after the unsuccessful 1745 uprising. So, there you have it, the most grisly historic tour of London. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to click subscribe.